Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mayor Jim Donches, for felicitating our superstar. Thank you. I have a small announcement. I have a small announcement to make. There's a red car, J29 FYA. It's blocking the street, and they have to remove the car. So a red car, J99 FYK. Whoever's car is that, please uh, get to your car as soon as possible. So may I now invite, I know she's very popular here, right? Sister Paula to say a few words. <laughs> Mr. Pavan Kalyan. <laughs> Riviere University and the city of Nashua <laughs> is honored to welcome you. We celebrate your love for democracy, your love for education, your love for youth, and we join with you in our mission to transform hearts and minds to serve the world. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Paul. May I now invite Honorable Paul William Oates, the former representative for New Hampshire, to say a few words, please. Welcome, sir. Mr. Mayor, honorable state representatives and senators, distinguished visitors and guests, and special guest, power star, Mr. Pawan Kalyan. <laughs> On behalf of the people of the United States, welcome to New Hampshire. And I also want to acknowledge my beautiful wife and partner, Pego, who has joined me here tonight. I am honored to address such a distinguished audience. Uh, I know that this is a special and historic gathering with guests assembled from around the world to celebrate democracy, the power of people, and the aspirations for social and political progress and justice in Andhra Pradesh. I'm very glad to have the opportunity to especially acknowledge friends Lata and Krishna Banjiputi, and also all my many friends in the Indian American community in Nashua for our mutual love and support. Now, in a state like New Hampshire, Diversity of ethnicity is new to many people. And I know that some of my dear friends have found the current environment challenging. I want to say to you and all who love peace and justice in New Hampshire that New Hampshire is and will always be a tolerant and open society and that we will never allow fear and bigotry to rule here in New Hampshire. The members of the Indian American community are woven into the very fabric of our great state, and we celebrate you and the contributions you make to life in New Hampshire. As a United States Congressman, and now as a member of the United States National Council on the Arts, my experience in government has provided me with many examples of the power of government to make a positive difference in the lives of citizens. I hold as a cherished memory that as a congressman, we were invited to attend the very first state dinner that President Obama held when he was elected. And that state dinner was to honor the people and the democracy of the great country of India. That was an example of the high regard in which the people of this country hold the people of India. Today in the United States, 
and indeed around the world, we are facing a test. It's a test of democratic values, of tolerance, inclusivity, a free press, integrity in office, and compassion for those in need. We are faced with a rising tide around the world of we-first nationalism and regressive political thinking. Some in the United States fear we are headed for a constitutional crisis caused by disrespect for the separation of powers enshrined in our Constitution and the norms and values which have guided our republic since its founding. But as we have seen here on the streets of our cities and towns, and we are seeing in the enthusiastic support for the Jana Sena party, it is the power of people. It is the power of people which, when awakened, is the power which governments must acknowledge and which governments must serve. In a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, as the great Abraham Lincoln said, in such a government, greed, misrule, and tyranny may flourish only so long. But history proves that those conditions will never achieve lasting power or influence so long as the people are vigilant, engaged, and empowered as citizens to stand up and speak out and make their voices heard in the streets and in the very corridors of power. As India's great Justice Khanna wrote in the conclusion of his book, The Making of India's Constitution, and I quote, if the Indian Constitution is our heritage, bequeathed to us by our founding fathers, no less are we, the people of India, the trustees and custodians of the values which pulsate within its provisions. A constitution is not a parchment of paper. It is a way of life and has to be lived up to. Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty, and in the final analysis, its only keepers are the people. It is clear to us all that power star Mr. Palwan Kalyan understands. He understands that social and political progress is the right of all the people in a great democracy and not just the right of a privileged few. We have plenty of examples, both here in the United States and in India, of arrogant, ego-driven figures who promise everything to everyone and once elected to office show themselves to be more interested in their own power than in the lives of their people. As Pawan Kalyan and Janasena move forward, I am confident from everything I have seen, everything I have heard, everything I have studied, and from meeting Mr. Pawan Kalyan and having the opportunity to speak with him, that he understands that the fundamental values of social justice that form the basis for the party and the movement will be followed and advanced, whether in or out of a position of power and influence, for he honors the higher ground of the common good. All those who are privileged to serve may attain the love and trust of those they serve, and so are able to lead their people to peace, justice, and shared prosperity. That is the right of the people who vote in a democracy, and that is the obligation of those who would serve. So my dear friends, on this historic gathering to celebrate our powerful starring guest, Mr. Palwan Galyan, thank you for coming, and thank you for joining us tonight.